Hey guys, how's it going? Back in the old Plumber Parts HQ. We're actually sat at the moment in the AL Army HQ. Got my little welding hat on because currently you're actually sitting on a little sort of rig that I've mounted up that's got the light, the camera, the theme tune, all that sort of stuff on it. So before I continue with today's video, number one, hit the subscribe button and the notification. Midweek videos are for us to answer comments. We also do tools I love. We also do in half, where we cut plumbing products in half and have a look inside them, see how they work. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. And then on Saturdays, we do full instructional videos following us through on jobs or actual full product reviews and how these new products work. Also, you can buy the t-shirt that I'm wearing right now on our lovely shop in the little bit below. You can see our t-shirt lined up there and also any of the tools that I use in the videos you can find in our Amazon store too so hopefully that's going to help you out quite a bit so anyway we're going to go back to the 16th of June where we uploaded plumbing disasters number 48 and we got roll corruption here he said did a DIY first fix on my kitchen the other week after binging a bunch of your videos no leaks yet but it used to look like one of those horror shows cheers for the tutorials no worries roll corruption mate it's really really nice thanks man George Petralgia said most of these disasters have something in common husbands turning themselves into weekend plumbers I'm happily retired now and after many years of doing plumbing even in countries that still use galvanized pipes I found myself more than once being supervised by experienced husbands to the point that more than once I left the workplace only to be called the next day the wife called back not the supervisor and start all over again charging double the price sometimes not often the husband was there recognizing his mistake and I didn't charge extra I'm a very plow plumber not an asshole amazing show greetings from Toronto well I mean there's been a reply I've got to bang that I'm gonna I'm saying I'm gonna go answering today yeah it's funny George or Jorge or however you want me to say your name I don't even know if I'm saying any of them right um it's funny isn't it you get to a job sometimes the husband's there they know how to do it all they've done it all millions of times before they've got the skills you don't know nothing and sometimes you just got to bite your tongue I've been in situations like that where you you just think okay okay sometimes even humor their ideas as to what they think it might be when they're like yeah there's a peculiar knocking coming from the toilet which is why I think the radiators don't work all right well we'll, we'll see we'll see how that pans out shan't we there we go. It's just one of those things, guys. And you know, summer plumbing, and I was thinking about doing this. Let me know if you think this is a good idea for a stream of videos. But I was thinking about doing a, a set of videos for apprentices that taught them things that they don't get taught at college and that sometimes might be a bit of a shock for them to learn when they actually finally go out on site or, or into someone's house with their with their plumber, the guy they're doing their apprenticeship with, and then they suddenly find out, shit, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. So, and, and more things like how to talk to customers, how to interact with your boss, how to be polite, things that are gonna make your boss really like you and things that they won't. So let us know, I might, I might do that as a video series, sort of a mini one, on a Wednesday as well. I mean, I like doing these little mini Wednesday videos. Fran thought my Jeremy Corbett, because I call my Corbett, Jeremy Cor it's called Jeremy Corbett, as in Jeremy Corbyn, the ex-Labour uh, man. Um, what about Ronnie Corbett? Okay, that's a good shout. So as ever, it's quite a good thing to see that you guys are commenting on the Plumbing Disasters video. There is gonna be a Plumbing Disasters video, I think next Wednesday. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you know what to do. You don't wanna be forgetting about that, guys. It's always a good laugh. And also, if you've got any Plumbing Disasters pictures or anything like that that you found along the way, then send them in to us at Plumber Parts on our Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, or you can even email them to info at plumberparts.co.uk. So let's move on to another video. This is a Saturday video that we released on the 19th of June, so just a few days after the disasters won. Uh, and this was all about Bluetooth heating controls upgrade, putting the Drayton Digistat in. When I was looking at this product, one of the things I really liked about it was that some people don't want 100% connectivity when it comes to Wi-Fi and all that sort of thing. And it was good that they've done this with just Bluetooth. So your phone just talks to this one little thing in the house. You haven't got this mad amount of connection that can happen when you you go out and you know it's not relying on the wi-fi all the time to work i mean it's a standalone product you can use it as a standard timer no different from a lot of the other drayton and thermostats but this one you can use your an app and bluetooth on your phone to control it as well which i thought was really cool so we've got james price who is a member of the al army by the way this is where we film the al armies on thursday evening uh, usually i'd have a beer in here i've got my weira bottle opener ready for the thursday evening live streams when we uh, have a couple of beers they get sneak peeks of Saturday's video they get to choose a song if you want to join just click the join button below this video it's an absolute bar game believe me 
Anyway, James Price said, such a great product, Jim Bob. Used one recently in my parents' house. So handy and look really nice as well. Hopefully see you on Thursday, mate. Yeah, there we go. And then he's got the Ale Army emojis. Why hello, Ale Army, hold tight. And F the agenda. That's an inside joke there for the Ale Army Massive. I always have an agenda and we never stick to it because I'm always going off on one. Another Ale Army member here as well, Gadgetman36. He says, tip, before you start, make sure the existing installation works as is. Otherwise, if it doesn't work after you've finished, you won't know if it's because of something you've done or not. That is a really, really good point there, Gadget Man. You're gonna get a little ticky tick for that and a heart as well. And also, it's something you'll find if you go to someone's house, uh, especially if you're doing a boiler service, sometimes they'll try and trick you by they've actually got a boiler fault, which usually re requires there to be you know, a spare part and generally costs more money. But um, if you go out there to do a boiler service that they've rung you up for this service and you don't run the boiler up beforehand, you won't know there's a fault, you'll then service it, then they'll go, well, it doesn't work now, what have you done? And there you go, you've been falling into them traps as they say in some place. Barry Paffy said, Sod's Law, I just fitted a new controller because the old one had all the marki markings worn out and seemed to be playing up. According to the date, it was almost 20 years old, man. We also don't have a main thermostat for the central heating, so one of these would have been the perfect solution. I'll just have to bite the bullet and change it again for one of these. Thanks for the video. Oh, sorry, Barry, came just a few days late, mate, which has never been a problem of mine. At least you watched the video and you've learned how to do it if you choose to do it in the future. And also it's given you, hopefully, a little bit of knowledge about the wiring for your system and how these sort of things work. Oh, honestly, I've got awful hair at the moment. That's why the hat's on. DJ Sonic came on as well he said sorry for noob question but the original turn dial for the temperature does that go full up to 30 degrees and what do you mean by link out first thing i want to say dj sonic and hopefully if you guys out there your apprentices out there your bosses and the people who teach you are going to say the same phrase that i'm about to say to you now but the only stupid question is the one you don't ask ask any question you ask sometimes you feel stupid it's better that you get the knowledge and you, uh, you, you say to yourself, I don't know the answer to this, someone can tell me. And if someone decides that it's a, a thing that they're gonna ridicule you, but asking that question, then they're not worth teaching you. So don't ever let anyone ridicule you for answering a question. The only stupid question is the one you don't ask. So the answer to your question there is the dial on those, on that particular thermostat does go up to 30. What can happen with thermostats is they go out of range, which is where you have a spring sometimes in them and the spring moves in and out according to temperature and heat and the spring's movement over time is so, it happens so often and so repetitively that the metal in that spring stretches and it goes out of range and doesn't work accurately anymore. This in a way is the problem that we have with old analog type th uh, thermostats and not the digital type ones that we have now, which have got a lot closer to what we call heat lag. So we have thermostats that used to have a heat lag of 10 degrees. So that means if your set temperature was at 20 degrees, it would get up to 25 degrees before it turned it off. And then it would go down to 15 degrees before it turned it on again. And then, and then we don't have that anymore. Now we're looking at like half a degree or even less. Uh, what do I mean by link out? Well, look, let's say I've got my wiring center here, and at the other end of the house, I've got my thermostat. Now, because we've installed the Drayton Digistat on this system, we don't need this thermostat anymore. And all this is, is a switch. So rather than closing that switch here, we can remove the wire back in the wiring center, and we put a little link in, which effectively tells the system, or effectively tricks the system, to thinking that the thermostat is constantly calling for heat. Purely because this thermostat here doesn't exist anymore. We're using a programmer and a thermostat all in one back here to do its job. Hopefully I said that in a good way. I commented there as well to you guys. Um, so Cosmin Cantonine as well said, that's exactly what I want to ask. How do we link out the old room thermostat? You can do it in two ways. You can link it out physically at the room thermostat if you want, although I wouldn't recommend that or you can take it back to the wiring center, find which wires are the switch live out and the switch live back to the thermostat and just put a little link in there. Very, very simple to do, but if you need any more help on that, just comment uh, in this video and I'll, and I'll let you know if you need any more help. And now we come to a video that caused controversy of some of the highest proportions I've ever seen in my whole life, all right? Best tape measure ever. Now, I'm gonna only answer one of your comments 
that is relating to the end of the tape measure, okay? Every day is a school day, all right? And I learned something that day. I had no idea. You know, I, I'd always thought, why are they wiggly at the end? All tape measures I've ever used are like that. But there you go. So let's just go for the top one of these people. So God of Thunder Design said, the movement of the end is specifically designed to accommodate the thickness of the end clip, compresses for internal measurements and extends for external measurements, unless you meant there's too much movement. God of Thunder, no, you're all right. You got me. And the Chipmunk 2008 said, yep, came here to say this. Josh Bra went same. Ache for Wake said same. And Hippie Chip said, oh, balls, just comment on this. Good catch. Oh, I'm just going to like all of these guys because it's good that people are there to do that. So, yeah, I cocked up in the video and this is the bit I cocked up about. Here you go. Is the fact that this bit here can move. And if you're looking for super, 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 super accurate stuff, then sometimes having a tape measure like this isn't going to be the way to do it. Yep, so I got that little bit wrong there. Hold my hands up. Still doesn't stop it being the best tape measure I've ever had. Uh, apart from the fact that it doesn't have markings underneath. And then some of you in the comment section sent links over to your favourite tape measures as well. And I might just buy some of them too, I think. And Air Rob came in and said, came to look at the comments to see people informing him of the purposely designed one millimetre end clip movement. Good to see plenty of teachers saving the day, lol. <laughs> oh, Air Rob, cheers, man. Yeah, so Air Rob, then Sam Jarman said, isn't the end bit supposed to move? to allow for the thickness of the end when you're measuring inside and outside of something? Yes, yes. L5 on tour said the end of the tape is not to hold tight. We know something you don't know. All right, mate. Dave Wilch here. I can't believe you don't know why the end moves, James. All right. Jaff Plum said, I bought it around six months ago because you recommended it. Oh yeah, boy. Great piece of kit. Just used it to panel a toilet room out and all my measurements were near bang on. Oh my God. Uh, Jaff is also a member of the AL Army and you can always see if they're a member of the AL Army because when they comment, they've got a little drop or some sort of ranking next to their name that means they're part of the crew. DJ Sotter commented, great video. I've won myself. Quick question, do you still play cricket? And if so, for who? Uh, I don't play as much cricket as I used to because I'm still trying to get the house done. Honest, darling, if you're watching. Um, but at the same time, and it's just a big part out of my day, out of my weekend, a whole Saturday off playing cricket. Um, I'm probably playing a lot more golf now and a lot of tennis as well. They're sort of like the two sports I do. Bobcat kindly commented, do you like that tape because it's fat then and can squat? Actually, I was gonna order one until you convinced me you didn't know how to use it. All that grip feel on the end will make it more inaccurate than the so-called loose end. How often do you measure open spaces above ground? No one needs a floating arch tape. It should be straight, donut. Love the videos anyway, keep it up. Cheers, Bobcat. <laughs> oh. Right, now we come to a video that I was really interested to see what your comments were going to be on this one because it's a new type video, not one that I've done before. It was something I just thought up and thought it'd be a really great way of being able to show you how products work, the thought behind them, the engineering behind them, sometimes even the physics behind them. So I thought I'd start off with a really complicated engineering one and just do a drain cock. You know what, the one thing that really made me chuckle, when I was putting this video on YouTube, uh, when it said cock, like drain cock, which is how we'll say it in the UK, YouTube flagged that up as being about sex. <laughs> I was like, all right. Obviously, whoever runs YouTube doesn't know anything about bloody plumbing. And the first comment that I really loved got to remind all the apprentices, take it out before soldering it. And what he's talking about is the rubber insert. If you're soldering it in, if you've got one that's a soldered one, uh, make sure you take that out before you solder it because you'll melt the rubber and ruin the valve. You know, everyone's done that once or twice. And then he said, and I asked in the video, what do you want me to cut in half in the next video? And he said, I think you should cut a three port zone valve and a two port. Well, we'll see, we'll see what we do. Uh, Vinny Surti said, I just learned something new, thanks. So hopefully that sort of worked, the cutting in half thing. Uh, Chris Cowley said, excellent video, more of these grinding stuff in half to show how they work, vids please. I'll try to, Chris, and if you want something, guys, if you want us to grind anything in half, comment below in this video and I'll see if I can catch it and we'll see if we can add it to the list. Gadgetman36, I know, you can cut Big G's tail in half by closing it in the door. Oh no, you've done that already. <laughs> Poor old G. Still going strong, his old big G at the moment. He's he's on his he's on cat palliative care. He seems alright, still biting me. Emily and I went where well, we were put through the mill because we've been away for a week and we haven't been away for a week in the last 14 months or whatever because of the pandemic. 
and suddenly we go away for a week. We got some mates coming over looking after the G unit. We got back for two days. He sat under the bed and would not come out. And you'd go under there. I, I tried all the tricks. I got the ham. I got the stick, the stick treats, the licky licks. He just sat there staring at me with his arms folded like that, just like. And then suddenly he comes out and he's like, okay, you've been forgiven now, you may stroke me. <laughs> it's like, you're such a git. Generically Handsome said, great video, could you do divert valves on boilers, old and new types? I presume you mean, when you say divert a valve, you mean a three port and a two port diverting valve. Uh, Henry King said, the joy of a stuck rubber seal over a cream carpet, trying to snatch it live. No matter how many sheets you have down, things never go to plan. Henry King, I think you're part of the trade, aren't you, mate? It sounds like you've been here before. George Cox said, great idea for a series. No worries, mate, glad you enjoy it. Mark Smith said, I've always thought that both the Type A and Type B were poorly designed. If someone came up with a decent drain off, they would be a winner. The MT9398 said, hi, thanks for your clips. A multi-block pressure reducing valve is not a bad idea to be cut in half and show next time. It's on the list, mate, and I've actually got one to do as well because you don't tend to have them lying about. What usually happens is they go straight off to the scrapyard and get converted into about a quarter of a pint of ale. Uh, Fishbait075 said, love to see inside a hot water cylinder with immersion heater. Seeing as I just had to have my heater element installed and the plumber, plumber wasn't in the mood to explain anything. All right, Fishbait, we'll pop that on the list as well. CF said, I would have skipped that trader five bit, but I had to watch it to see if you got it in the bucket. Good shot. Chaz C asked whether we could do push fit unions and fittings. Good shout. And it's great that you guys are commenting what you want to see. Um, it's brilliant because it shows you're engaged and you want to learn more. And I want to cut stuff in half anyway. Come on. Chris Gunn said, thanks, Jimmy. And he's, in the, he's a member of the AL Army as well. Think you need to work on that swing, our kid. Any chance you can cut Matt Hancock in half and see what's happened there? Bloody hell. What's your opinion on press fit fittings? They're okay. I haven't, I haven't done anything on press fit fittings, actually. I might have a look into that. I mean, I, you, I'm, a, I'm a bit old school. I do my soldering, I do my compression. Maybe I'll have a little go at it and see what I think. Chatteris Weather said, cut away a modulating gas valve, please. Okay, have a look at that. Uh, Legion of Many said, Draincock. We now know James' nickname at school. And it wasn't Drain. Oh, you have to laugh. Bloody hell, Legion of Many. It's brutal, it's harsh. Uh, Nick Collins said, we have a very crappy design of Draincock in the UK. So you're another one saying the same thing, man. Um, whole thing needs a complete redesign, as when one actually needs to use them, they're rarely without problems. Well, like you saw in the video, like leaking and seizing the hardened knackered washers. As soon as one messes with them, better hope one can successfully remove the old washer and fit a new one. Can be a nightmare. Listen to what Nick just said there, guys, and inwardly digest it. If you're going to work with drain cocks, you need to know what you're doing. Simon J said, how about a primatic cylinder? I've just had mine swapped out for a Gledhill thermal store and the look of panic on the plumber's face when he couldn't work out how or where the water was getting into the cylinder or the radiators. He was on the phone to Gledhill, quick smart, and they pointed him in the right direction. All right, mate, I'll see if I can find one. I'll, I'll go over to the scrapyard and see what I can find. I'll have a word with Jezza. Ian Watson said, regarding safety, a grinder shouldn't be used with the handle removed. Should that disc be used on brass? And is the face mask visor suitable for a grinding wheel? The visor is so thick, it's ridiculous. The only problem is, is that they get flecked with the hot stuff and after a while it's almost like there's like a film on them and then you just have to buy a new one but now i like those face mask ones because i had a grinder one that was a standard goggle like the proper goggles you have that people give you with grinders and a little bit got up under my nose and went into my eye bit of a story for you here emily had to go to work the next day i was living around with her and her mum and her parents at the time uh, we were saving money up for a deposit on a house so her mum had to take me to a and e at four in the morning because i went to bed i thought i'll blink it out it'll be all right it'll be all right and then uh went to a and e at four in the morning and we sat there just me my missus's mum and another couple who were getting off with each other in the middle of A&E. And I thought, God, I hope she doesn't want to do the same with me. <laughs> Poor old Glennis. Sorry, love. Um, <laughs> Siegley said, dude, I think maybe YouTube aren't notifying of your videos. Not had many recently. Well, remember to click the bell button and all notifications. And then you will get notified. And then you should get notified by YouTube. Uh, Paul Ross said, come on, hold tight. You can do better than, than this, my old son. This is basic. Start low, build up from a base, and we'll go from there, okay? Brian Hudson wants to see a heat exchanger cut in half. I'm pretty sure I did one a couple of weeks ago. 
even though I kept calling it a bloody expansion vessel, I don't know why. Don Wright said a motorised valve. Peter M. Ferguson wants a gate valve cut in half. And Lennon Smith wants a check valve cut in half. Okay, we'll have a look at all of those and see what we can do. And now we're also back in the bathroom, back in the bathroom series, doing a very basic job of me whacking in some lever valves just so I can keep knocking the water on and off as soon as I like when I'm doing any work in the bathroom or anywhere else in the house. Uh, loads of comments on this one, so we'll see if we can whittle them down to some of the best ones. Joshy Boo, who has been on some plumber, plumbing disasters videos in the past and also does a lot of work for us on the social media front. Josh, mwah, I love you. My nickname is Lever Valve Boy, he said, because I love sticking lever valves everywhere. Once I made the domestic house look like a commercial building, but guess what? There's a problem, I can lever valve it off. I think, what did I comment him back? Yes, Joshy Boo. <laughs> Josh, how is Judah doing? How's the kids? How's Becca? Andy Miles said, don't worry, James. My wife spent six years before I finished our downstairs loo. I've been told she's getting someone in for the bathroom. <laughs> That's pretty much what Emily's thinking at the moment. And she hasn't even got the downstairs toilet anywhere near done yet. Oh dear. Uh, Gary Dolson said, same here. When I swear a fitting together, as soon as I smell flux melting high, it reminds me of dad. It takes me back to being a 10 or 11 year old and all these years after I worked with him. Cheers, Jimmy. It's very strange, isn't it, how smells can evoke memories like that. And it's just nice, every time I smell a bit of soldering, I always think, oh, those days when I was a kid, when I had no worries in the world. <laughs> and now it's just, uh, it's just stress, isn't it? Proper stress. Um, Mike Dolman said, thanks, job I must tackle before winter sets in. I was considering a flexible pipe with a built-in shut off. Hold tight, good luck, mate. Jazz C said, could you fit a smart stop tap so you don't have to keep going up there? Sure stop. Uh, I don't have to do that now. I've fitted the lever valves, too late, all right? Sniffling Smithster said, been looking forward to this, James, hold tight. No worries, mate. Glad to know you enjoyed it. John Waby knows the pain. He said, why is it we never put things in our own house straight away? It's the same for all the trades. It's not just, it's not just plumbers. We do, we're out working, we're doing bloody plumbing all day. We get home, do we really want to do any more? Jeffrey Price said, hi. Well, one of those long levers fit in place are the little plastic ones you get in the washing machine valves, thanks. Yes, it will do, mate. And if you find that the lever can't open or close for any old reason, you can take it off and orientate it down, around the other way. One of you did actually say about that uh, in the comments. We'll probably come to that in a minute. Terry65100 said, great. Took off my first radiator today with the help of your videos. Need to remove a kitchen sink for the flooring guy. Going to install a couple of those valves to easily remove and put back in the kitchen sink. Legend. That's a good thing to do. Lead Learner said, or Lead Learner said, Jimmy, can I ask for advice please? What isolation valves do you use on 15 millimeter gray poly pipes under the bath? Unfortunately, I can turn off the hot and cold water feed. Are there any in situ isolation valves I can use? Thank you for your advice. Uh, I've done a video on you being able to tap in um, valves live with the Aladdin product. I'll leave a link to that in the description below, okay? Let me know how you get on with that, mate. Anthony Salisbury said, God, you make it look easy. I mean, trying the best that I make, you know what I mean? I turned down all the swearing when I was pulling the pipes out, like, you, mate. Uh, Barry Lowe said, hi, James. At last, we are making a bit of progress. Keep going with it and good luck with it. I think Barry might be taking the piss there, but there we go. Cheers for your comment, mate. <laughs> J6481 said, James, don't let your wife pick those mosaics I spied in the bathroom as you went in the loft. We fit those in kitchens a while back. They're an absolute pain in the ass to fit. I know, I know, mate, that you cannot grout them very nice either. They never look very good grouted. Tom Dutton said, shouldn't the valves fall to off instead of on? You're actually correct there, mate. A uh, bit of a cock up from me, but I can just take the heads off and have it the different way around. They'll be absolutely fine. They are very stiff. I mean, if they were to fall, you'd have to drop a bag past it or something like that. And then it would, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. It's, just that it's probably not gonna happen, mate. That's what I'm saying, all right? But I can change them around if I want to, and I probably won't. There you go. David Fox said, hi James, thanks for your videos. I find them very informative. I do have one question you may be able to help with, please. We are in a very hard water area and had to have a new tank element fitted. The amount of scale present, present was horrendous. So gonna need to try something to limit the hard water. A water softener can't be installed, so looking at electronic scale inhibitor. Is this what I need? If so, any recommendations? 
If not, do you have any other ideas, please? Please kick up, keep up the good work. David, why can you not install a water softener? Is it because your mains comes in away from the kitchen sink, which has to be the, well, it's usually the only unsoftened outlet in the house? Uh, is it because you don't want one? Is it because you've got a problem with electric, so you don't have to worry because you've got Kinetico ones that are double, so they don't require electricity? Um, what I'm trying to say is, try to fit a water softener, all right? And I'm gonna be doing a video of me installing a water softener on the job in the next couple of weeks. Well, probably in about a month's time, so make sure we get involved in that as well, okay? You can fit a combi mate on the water supply in, and that will do something to make it a little bit better, a little bit better. You can fit a combi mate on the water supply in. I've never done it on tanks like that before. I've only ever done that on combi boilers. So maybe you should give that a try. It's not a vast amount of money. They're quite easy and quick to install. Um, and if it doesn't work, they're quite easy to take out as well. Might be worth a try if you think you're gonna be spending a lot of money on components in the system due to constant scale buildup. So Michael O'Toole said, he commented, I enjoyed your video from one master plumber like myself to another capable master plumber from across the pond. It's cool to see how you deal with the same types of work I engage with weekly in Pittsburgh PA. Now, I'm nearly 36 on the job and I'm feeling it a little bit, bro. I try to keep my mind sharp by being a plumbing instructor for two, three hour classes a week, two semesters per year. It's 24 nights per semester. The one thing is for certain, every thinking man still learns something new each day, like I did with that tape measure. Some of the fittings you use over there aren't approved in the US, as I'm sure there are some vice versa there. But you're still my master plumbing brother from across the pond. Much respect to you, sir. I have no doubt you are very helpful to all the types of people over there. A man willing to show his trade to others via video forum has pride in his trade. Thanks, my friend. You have a new subscriber. Well, thanks for your comment, Michael. It's very, very kind of you, mate. I think it is a very difficult time for a lot of people, just in general. Joe Thane said, what on earth is a master plumber? He replied, I've never heard that title. Uh, and then Michael said, in the USA, you have to do a complete 576 hours of classroom time while proving on your tax form that you've been working these as an apprentice plumber on, in your day job. Hence the required 576 hours needed to qualify. Since they realize that you often work late on emergency jobs, so there are excuses, excused absences for time spent working overtime with your boss, with the boss writing you a note that you will receive time credit. After completing your four years of apprenticeship, you're then eligible to take the journeyman's test, which is 125 US dollars. Upon satisfactorily completing that, you have to be a journeyman plumber for two full years. Then you become eligible to take your master's test for one cost of 375 pounds. If you fail either test, you get no refund and must wait six months to retake it and repay for exams. However, once you've achieved your master plumber's license, you are set for life. Simply send in the £375 a year to keep it renewed. Most reputable plumbing companies will pay this for you. How about that? Loaf for Sheffield commented, your missus has goodwill, you lucky lucky beast-starred. <laughs> See Monty Python, Life of Brian. I'm, hold on, I think which one I like the most. Holy Grail, by miles. Anyway, I've been married 15 years. You only get seven for manslaughter. Credit, Les Dawson. Completely overhauled our bathroom, including tiling walls and floor, all new boards three years ago. My missus went on holiday, visiting relatives for five weeks in California and insisted on video conferencing me every day for a progress report. Is that all you've done? Big mother, see telly screen Orwell's 1984. Well, I tell you what, we're living in a world like that now, I think. Jeffrey Price said, hi, why do plumbers use grips and adjustables rather than the correct size spanners? Because we're bloody lazy. And also, if you have to have a spanner set, it weighs a lot, it's quite a lot in your bag. We always, and we have to deal with so many different types of nut in, in different parts of houses and things like that, just makes better use of your time to have an adjustable spanner. One thing I would say though, is it is good to use two adjustable spanners and not just a set of grips and one adjustable. It's up to you. Antonio Galluccio said, I saw you did not use a pen reamer to deburr the inside of the copper pipe. I usually lose a lot of time to make, I usually lose a lot of time to make it smooth because in college they taught me it may cause turbulences, should I not care about it. If you are going to be doing straight on fittings like a solder fitting, it's something you should think about because the burring in the middle causes a rotor of water, which then will put pressure onto the pipe next to that rotor and unevenly erode it, okay? And that's why you deburr pipes. If you're pushing a fitting into a lever valve, you won't need to deburr it because what you're fitting it up to, 
the, the, the pipe is butting up to a smaller or a slightly smaller orifice anyway, and the rotors happen inside the valve itself. You can't control that. So there you go. And then to finish today's comments video, we've got Ch Chianon McHugh said, good video as always. I put leave the valves falling closed and stagger them. Pegler do ones that lock so no one can touch them. Well, there we go. Now we know that as well. Thanks for your comment there, Chianon, if I've said your right name right. Probably haven't. Anyway, thanks for watching this week's Plumber Parts comments video. It's been great to have you along to read and listen to some of the comments and learn from some of the other comments that people have made. Remember, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. So why don't you ask some below and ask them on the next videos that are going to be going out this Saturday, next Wednesday, and hopefully for the next few years at least. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the notification. Please join the Al Army. And if you want, buy a t-shirt from our shop or some tools from our Amazon store. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I love you all. And remember to hold tight.